Sex. Now that I have your attention, let me talk to you about math. So, you're in calculus, and you're wondering, what am I ever going to do with calculus? Well, here's three professionals that will talk to you about what you can do with calculus. There's the commercial architect, the structural engineer, and the computer engineer, here to talk about why they chose to do what they do, and how you can make that same choice. It's a challenging job. It's a rewarding job. Um, every day there's a new challenge, so it's not the same thing day in and day out, which is uh, rewarding. I've been designing buildings for uh, earthquake resistance for 30 years. It's very interesting, and uh, the technology keeps improving. Um, I guess I enjoy it, for one. I think I'm pretty good at it. Um, and I make money. <laughs> That's right, he said money, so now let's look at the income of these jobs. A computer engineer can make on the low end between $57,000 and $80,000, and on the high end, make between $113,000 and $158,000. A structural engineer can make on the low end between $54,000 and $66,000, and on the high end, they can make between ninety-two dollars and $111,000. The architect, on the low end, can make between thirty-two dollars and $58,000, and on the high end, make between $64,000 and $98,000. A janitor only makes between fifteen dollars and $20,000. Which one would you rather be? So now, let's see what you'd have to do in order to make all that dough. Um, mainly what I do is set up a lot of processes. I work in new product introduction, so I set up process for s assembling, um, testing, big mainframe computers. Uh, we're a structural firm and we design uh, buildings and we specialize in uh, K through 12 and university educational buildings and healthcare hospitals and healthcare facilities and also in uh, corporate and life sciences, which these days there's a lot of biotechnology out there. Um, but I also uh, manage and direct uh, uh, fairly large complex projects, mostly um, uh, international and global accounts. Uh, one of our accounts that I'm managing right now is AT&T, which is of course a global account, and then I also manage uh, and direct a very large account, uh, the Chevron account, which uh, they have offices of, of um, locations in San Ramon, in Houston, and Anchorage, uh, Alaska. We've got a couple of fun products right now. Yeah, one is actually a 600 meter tower in Shanghai. It's going to be the world's tallest tower when, com when completed. Um, the only tower taller than it uh, will be the Burj Dubai. But um, it's a sustainable tower in, in, in that it has actually wind turbines at the top of this tower. And the wind turbines will generate electricity, which will then augment the, uh, the electrical um, power needed to supply lighting for the building. It also has a large uh, cistern at the top of the building, which is uh, a large funnel to collect rainwater. And the rainwater then will be used internally within the building to help with um, augmenting of cooling systems, but also to um, assist uh, in the restrooms for uh, uh, water for washing your hands, but also for using uh, for flushing the toilets. And it also has uh, what's called a double skin system, uh, two layers of glazing on the exterior, which will help immensely with um, uh, building e energy efficiencies and um, utilizing less energy actually to, uh, to heat and cool the building than what would normally be required for a building of its size. I bet you're wondering just what jobs would have to use this. Well, listen up and you'll find out. Well, let's see. Um, primarily basic math. Uh, we don't get into calculus and physics at, at our level. It's mostly um, through Excel spreadsheets, um, working with uh, formulas, and that would just be primarily um, multiplication and addition, subtraction formulas within Excel. Um, you know, very rarely do we get into any um, uh, more advanced math that might be you know, using calculus. A lot of our work um, is really on the design side, where we're you know, implementing and designing um, spaces for individuals. I worked for a solar company um, one summer during college, and we had to calculate the angle of the solar panels to optimize the amount of energy that they would receive based upon the latitude and the longitude of the location in which they were being installed. Um, mainly, probably, algebra. There's uh, maybe a little bit of calculus with some thermodynamics. We use uh, calculus to do a lot of things uh, from uh, designing buildings. We have to do a lot of static calculations. There's a lot of calculus involved for designing beams, figuring out deflections of beams and floor systems. Uh, but we also do uh, dynamics of structures, which is 
We use that for earthquake design of buildings and uh, that's really my passion is the seismic design of buildings and so that uses dynamic equations of motion and dynamics of structures. A lot of calculus involved in that. Anyone recognize any of those words? Thermodynamics? Optimize? Dynamic motion? How about algebra? I know that I never told anybody that I could read minds, but I can tell right now that all of you are thinking, what kind of schooling do I have to get in order to get these jobs? I took physics, uh, I, I took, um, I think I took advanced calculus, again, although we don't use that much uh, these days in architecture. But um, art history, um, we took some daylighting classes and there were a couple of um, environmental classes and then there were a couple of uh, classes having to do with, this, with the profession itself. I took geometry in 10th grade in my day and age. I think my son's taking it in 8th grade, so he's way ahead of me. And I got 100% in the class, so I was pretty good at it. And uh, after that, I didn't take any more math in high school. Took a whole bunch of other stuff and uh, realized when I started college that I missed math. So I uh, took a few math classes, and while I was getting straight A's in math and I was struggling in English and, and other subjects, it just seemed that that's where my talents were. Took a lot of math, uh, a lot of science, um, a lot of computer classes. Just worked really hard. Did you have to take calculus class? Yes, I had calculus. I actually had calculus as a sophomore in high school was the first time I took calculus, then I took it again in college. Overwhelming, isn't it? With so many choices, how are you supposed to pick? Well, I decided to do architecture back in college. I started out actually as an engineer, worked um, for a small engineering firm during the summers, and um, about two and a half years through school, I realized I didn't want to design bridges and overpasses and freeway off and on ramps. So I switched majors and I uh, chose architecture. And from there, I finished up my degree in the School of Architectures and got my Bachelor's of Arts in Architecture. Uh, I don't think I ever decided to do my job. I, uh, I was always good in math as a, as a high school kid. And so I just kind of kept following my interests. Uh, so in college, I kind of followed my interests into in general engineering. And then after a few more years, I followed them into civil engineering. And after a few more years, I followed them into structural engineering just because those were the most interesting classes. And then I got into the profession and continued to enjoy it, so I'm still in it today. Great. I, attended, uh, I attended high school in Oakland and then I went to a community college in Oakland for two years. And I went to University of California, Berkeley for my three years until I got a bachelor's in civil engineering. And then I worked for two years and then I went back for a year and got a master's in structural engineering, structural mechanics. I know you were all excited to go home and start preparing for these jobs you will land in a couple of years, but I think it is wise for you guys to listen to a word of advice from these professionals first. Follow your passion. I think you can create a career out of almost anything. Uh, so stick with it. Uh, things change over time. Every year is a new year. Every day is a new day. And uh, don't get discouraged and quit, but uh, figure out what you really like and uh, really put your heart into it and you could probably develop that into a career. I'd say, uh, if, if, if anything, follow your passion. Um, and don't uh, worry that if you start out in college and um, the first career path or the first you know college um, career that you choose isn't the one that you, you end up with. Uh, like I said, I started in engineering and I moved over to architecture. So if you're not sure where you want to go at this point in time, you know, there's nothing wrong with starting in you know, general education and then um, you know, waiting a year, maybe in your sophomore year, to determine you know, where you want to go. But um, by all means, um, don't forgo college. It's a wonderful experience and I'd, I'd highly recommend it. One of the first things I would recommend to all students is if you get the opportunity to go test out some of the, the jobs that you think you would like to do, careers, um, do that. I originally wanted to be a doctor and I had an opportunity, an electrical engineer took me to an open house at the Lawrence Livermore Lab and that changed everything for me. Oh.